the the average clients like that I would work for like um, it would pay like five to ten thousand you know for a campaign one day too, um, but good God, but it was <laughs> we are in the wrong business, Kim. No, <laughs> just kidding. Um, <laughs> no, she's actually in the right business. Apparently. <laughs> I'm sure you are too. I'm in the wrong business. <laughs> Get yeah. me out of here. <laughs> Hey, what's going on, guys? We got another awesome podcast. This time we got my girlfriend co-hosting, Kim hello, Rose over here. Hello, hello, hello. And we're accompanied by Andrea and Felix. Hello, everyone. Also known as Color, Color by Felix. Has almost a million followers on Instagram with all of his amazing art. Has it's beautiful crazy. art. Yeah. And it's mostly um, acrylic, right? Would you say that's the medium? Yes. So, I, I mean, I've explored with oils a little bit of other art materials, but mainly acrylics. That's yes. awesome, man. And then Andrea, she's a business brainiac over here. And, and you guys are married. <laughs> she's like, stop. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what would you say? Like, you kind of handle like the business side of things, right? Yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And then we got Kim, my co-host over here. Maybe talk a little bit about what you do. Uh, I mean, I think they already know. I'm and not everyone knows. We've got to act like it's in some new people in here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Kim. I'm an artist as well. Um, I actually met Felix through our, we had an art event and he was one of the artists that participated. So that was really, really cool of them. Uh, to give a little bit more of a backstory about what they do, they've grown in social media incredibly quickly. And I know this because because I talked to you guys a little bit earlier, but um, what I think is really, really insightful is how they leverage their social media and use that to be able to sell direct to consumer, which is something that anybody that's selling a product, especially artists, I think is something that is so, so important. So I'm actually really excited for this podcast. I'm really excited to hear kind of how you guys grew together and how that whole dynamic worked. Yeah. And I'm super excited too. And like you said, the direct to consumer model i mean i think it's so interesting in the art world because i mean you're talking about getting into galleries now and i'm interested to hear your opinion on the gallery world versus direct <laughs> to consumer because i know there's some drama in there sometimes or like you know a little cliches mm -hmm. so i'm excited to get into that but why don't we just start off with where it all began now i know you're out from russia originally right bro that is correct. I moved to Seattle, Washington in 1997. So wow. when I was seven years old. That's crazy. And I pretty much grew up there and yeah, and still there in Seattle. Now, um, where you were born in Russia, where was that? It? Uh, it's Rostov, Russia. It's like um, maybe about 750,000 people living in that area so okay. it's a pretty wide spread out city but um what's it's that like, what's that near for anyone that doesn't know russia too well like it's near actually it's near the border of ukraine okay. so it's it, yeah it's more on the west side of russia cool cool close to the black sea yeah and then i'm guessing you met felix out in seattle right mm -hmm. andrea yeah and w where did your beginning start at in seattle uh yes it's so in the suburbs of seattle so cool. like maybe 20 minutes away from there Nice. And um, so so where did art start for you, Felix? What were you dabbling with in the beginning? I mean, was it from a young age? I know for Kim, it was like, what, seven or something? I just always did it. Yeah. Yeah. What about so what about you? I, for me, I mean, I feel like every artist I talk to, I feel like it's always been there for them. Like and so for me, the same thing. It's always been there for me. I always doodled and, you know, just a pencil and paper. Mm -hmm. That's how I started. And then just, I used to draw like cars. My favorite car was Porsche. And <laughs> I used to draw like those classic cars, <laughs> you know. And, and uh, people started asking me, I remember in th third, fourth grade, hey, can you draw me a car? I want, want this car. Can you draw me an Escalade? Can you, do, you know, and then I started kind of Escalade. What is that? I didn't even know. But And they were asking because your drawings were so impressive to them at the time, right? I Yeah, I guess I so. Mean, I, unless. <laughs> They were too nice. Like, Can you draw me a picture? I want to put it on my wall. Like, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Man, that's yeah. so cool. So from there, I started, you know, drawing more because I saw that people really enjoyed it and, and they made them happy. So I was like, oh, cool, I can do this more. And then in freshman year of high school is when I started messing with acrylics. And I love the challenge because it dried fast. Mm -hmm. And I love the color because that was something totally new to me. And so, um, but I liked that challenge and I kept sticking with it. And Yeah. Yeah. Man, that's amazing. And um, in terms of... Uh, social media I mean well before we jump to that just to give a little bit more of a full background story so after high school did you go to college did you study or what like a little between 
high school and then being where you're at now? Like fill us in a little bit more. Sure, sure. Um, so I did take, um, it's funny you say, because like uh, my family, we, we grew up like earlier, what we talked you know, to you about also that we grew up in, uh, when we moved here, my family, it, it, we're all about like hard working hard. So everyone works hard and kind of Art was a thing where it was more of a hobby. I, I know it's like in pretty much every culture, it's really hard to make it as an artist. Yeah. But so I didn't think anything that artists could be something or, you know, you can make really you can make it. It's like one percent um, chance. But um, so I, I, I did that on the side, but I did accounting for like half a year and I like the numbers I like the calculations and all that but I I just was quickly bored out of it because I didn't want to sit in the office you know do that so I changed that how old were you when you were getting to that that was right after high school Got it. so um yeah right after high school I was like 18 19 mm -hmm. and then um from there I changed and started doing firefighting and I did I, <laughs> yeah. 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 I was trying to do some research but I didn't hear that yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dang. it's yeah, because it's i think that because like the main reason is that his family was not supportive of the art at all like they would yeah. tell him you can't make money at this like try something else yeah you know so. and that's very common for yeah. most artists i heard about your construction chapter but i did not hear the firefighting chapter so what's <laughs> the story behind that man construction was always there i was yeah. even when i was in high school i would help my dad like he had a t he has a towel business so yeah. um i would help him do that and he's a really hard worker so i i i think i got that part from him working hard and, and and beyond you know and looking at my dad i think i got a lot of that from him mm -hmm. but um so i always did the construction then to help my uncle my brothers are you know doing framing um siding um yeah fr all that stuff so everything that takes to build a house uh, pretty much did except the electrical part but yeah that was always there on the side whenever wow. i needed extra money so i did that um but i i kind of wanted to get away from that and, and because i really wanted to do something different and that is why like well i mean firefighting kind of stood out to me i then i jumped joined this fire station volunteered for three years and went to college um for two years to complete this program and actually i didn't finish it because i needed two more math classes and I didn't finish yeah. because that's when I met Andrea. Ah. And <laughs> Bad influence. No yeah. kidding. So, so wait, uh, this was in community college then out in Seattle? Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And what were you studying at the time? Um, I started studying nursing and then I started volunteering in that and I really didn't like it. And so in nursing, yeah. And then, um, eventually I did, um, uh, I got my bachelor's in kinesiology, which is exercise science. <laughs> so yeah, that totally was my different. original major at Azusa Pacific. So that's pretty uh, cool. Yeah. I didn't cool. even know Dang. That. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dang. So how did you guys meet? From my brother, actually. So um, Felix, another one of his side jobs that he would do is <laughs> modeling. So modeling, yeah. really? Okay. Yeah. So Wilhelmina. Really? Yeah. Casual. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So he was doing modeling, and like um, before all of that stuff, he started doing modeling. But he was he got a job with Nordstrom, and he had been working there for a while. And my brother is a stylist at Nordstrom, so they became friends. And he was telling me about this cool guy that he met at work, who's also a model. And, and <laughs> no. I was like, Oh, who is? She this? was like, Tell more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell more. Oh my gosh, I'm dead. Yeah, that's actually hilarious. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about your modeling chapter. Like, is that still going? It's still going. Okay, um, cool. I I like I like the change. Um, it's still there. Uh, I, I've tried to focus more on art because that's where my passion is. Yeah. Um, but I used to do it a lot more. But now, whenever I can, I do it. Like if I have a free time and they, they the agency reaches out, hey, are you available? Um, and I, if I'm available, I'll do it for sure. Um, because wow. it's a nice little change. Oh, of course. And, um, and again, fashion and art is very, you know, and music, it's all like kind of very similar, very creative in that. Um, yeah. Well, tell me about that chapter. So when did that start? Like, because I mean, well, I mean, it's a big agency. It's not so casual. So was that back when you were in high school or college or? Well, yeah, that was that was actually um, during the time when I was in college. Mm -hmm. So I, I was scouted um, in Portland, Oregon. 
at a mall with my friends and I laughed because I didn't know what modeling was, but this tall yeah. lady comes up to me and gives me a card and says, I love that. Hey, they're like, you're tall. <laughs> yeah, they're like, hey, you, you ever thought about modeling? Please come see our agency. We, we think you could go international. And at the time, wow. I thought it was a scam. I thought they just want to maybe get some money out of me or something. So but I made a joke with my friends. You know, I brought the card. Hey, look, they, you know, somebody approached me. Ha, ha, ha. But one of my good <laughs> friends, he's um, the next couple of days, he called me. He's like, hey, Felix, you know, I really think you should try this out. I checked them out um, and they are legit. And I, uh, yeah, he's a good friend. He, he has impacted me. Yeah, um, his is. name is Francisco. He's still a good friend. Um, but Aww. he's still a good friend. Um, and so he called me and he actually went with me. And it's like a four hour drive to this agency from Seattle to Portland. Got so it. it was a far drive just for a meeting, you know? Yeah. But uh, he joined me and we went together. And immediately from there, I got signed with ford models in mm -hmm. new york and then from there it all started picking up um he shot with like um i don't know if you've heard of bruce weber oh yeah, yeah he's he a big shot one. with him he has all the abercrombie uh, yeah for abercrombie he shot with him and yeah. um did a lot of a lot of big jobs like when he first started but again kind of the same thing with art his family like because he grew up very conservative they were not yeah. supportive yeah. and so his agency was like you guys should stay in new york uh you should stay in new york you're doing really well the clients are liking you and like you need to keep growing here and he was like getting pulled in two directions you know like his family was like telling him you need to go to school get a degree come home you know and they're telling him that so eventually after like a couple months he went home and like his agency was like okay well if you're not in new york like we can't oh. be booking you you know so yeah. that's when he started doing the firefighting and everything mm -hmm. else <laughs> yeah Which makes so sense. that was before the firefighting and then after the firefighting what did you do um construction, construction. so i did i did construction and i modeling. still did modeling because actually after the firefighting when we met um um we moved to new york because my agency was there i was with dna models and uh, the, the Wilhelmina agency is actually recently i my you know english a little bit still mm. rough. <laughs> um but uh yeah so we moved there and we lived there um i worked actually in new york when we moved there for about a year right um I was doing catering, like they have this. Uh, I love this whole list of jobs. <laughs> 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 the life of um, an artist. Let me was know. Like, if, was no, it like a model so catering? Thing? Yeah, it was, that too. it was like yeah, it's a, modeling. It was like catering. modeling. Like the, <laughs> when they he hired was models. In, uh, runway waiters? Is that it? No. Yeah, well, it's like uh, yeah, 911 yeah. staffing or like, um, you know, like there's matrix models there's yeah. uh, there's these big high-end it's basically they, like good-looking waiters yeah like <laughs> they, they like there's a standard to this yeah <laughs> i guess i guess can you stay in there yes <laughs> okay yeah, I, I guess and, and and the agency recommended um because they said well you know in the meantime new york can be expensive but this is what a lot of the models do to um you can pick and choose the jobs and um you know when you're free yeah. and um just to get stable income, you know, Maybe. in the beginning, because that's what a lot of people had to do. Definitely, yeah. And, um, and so I did that for a while and, um, it was interesting wearing a suit. I was like, yes, finally I'm wearing a suit, a sick slim suit. I don't have to, you know, work construction cause you're always, you know, dirty, dusty and all that. Yeah. Uh, no offense about that. I appreciate the hard work. That's for sure. Yeah. But, um, it was a nice little, you know, change. It was, it was an interesting experience. Definitely. Um, but yeah. Jeez, man, that's crazy. So then art after that or no? Yeah, where was art during art. this whole this whole timeline here? Yeah. Were, so, you, were you doing it the whole time? Still? I, I was doing as it as a the hobby. Uh, yeah, as a hobby. So it was always on the side. Like I, whenever I, I would come home or on the weekends after work, I would just um, try to find time to sit down and finally paint. And that's when I really relaxed, you know, because New York could be really rushed. Everything's so fast paced. And this was time of like for me, meditation, you know, when I got in the zone, started painting and um, and we had this little apartment, you know, and so it was very <laughs> limited space. Whereabouts in New York, by the way? Uh, Queens. Oh, oh, really? Okay, mm -hmm. interesting. Flushing, to be exact. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's called flushing. We, we, every time we've gone to New York, we've just stayed around Manhattan. So that's interesting that you're in like an outside borough. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Borough. That's yeah. What they call it. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> this girl. Come on, Kim. <laughs> she's like, it's get okay. with she's it. She's from Orange County. Give her a break. <laughs> 
Man, that's amazing. So, uh, when was your first sale with art? Sale of art? Yeah. Um, well, the first sale happened actually in high school and that's what kept me also got me excited because um i did this show like the final project in high school to, in order to graduate you have to do this big project and present something that you see yourself doing in the future mm -hmm. and to me the first thing i'm like well, i don't know what else to do and i'm embarrassed to do something that like like i don't really like i don't I don't feel it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, well, I feel art and I want to do it. So I had a few paintings that I finished. So I chose to do the art and then I set it up, chose a class to come present this project. And a couple of the ladies that work for the school really liked the pieces and reached out to me, said, I want to buy it, make a Love portfolio. It. You know, I want to see more of your work. Yeah. And I was shocked. I was like, wow, my first painting for $175. Which is I was, good. Which is really good. I was like shocked. And then from there, I uh, started going to like coffee shops and putting my artwork at coffee shops and asking them if they wanted art there mm -hmm. and um, yeah. and just kind of went around the town and it first started in my little town and then from there um, uh, then I went out and tried to go out in the bigger cities and actually um, we weren't in Seattle when you know the college that i went to was in mount vernon and mount vernon is a very small it's like barely like forty thousand people live in that city mm. um but so that's where it was kind of happening there it's amazing yeah. i know for kim it happened kind of early too didn't a teacher like have you designed their tattoo yeah shout out to the color by felix youtube channel we go in depth about this but um <laughs> yeah so we talked a little bit about that it was the same thing it was early on someone said hey can you design my tattoo and i said sure i'll design your tattoo i got paid like 15 bucks for it i was like i'll do this anyway this is great mm -hmm. and then started i post on instagram and then had a few more but something that i really liked what we talked about like you said you put your art in coffee shops and that right there is just one of the ways that that early on you start to hustle and you start to put yourself mm -hmm. in kind of uncomfortable situations or things. It's like, it's not mm -hmm. the most comfortable thing to walk into a coffee shop and be like, hi, can I speak to your manager? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're not Is here. Okay, I'll come you? again tomorrow. It's just like, you're like, ah, okay, cool. And then you're like emailing and you're just awkwardly trying to be like, can I sell my art in here? Like, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I think that this is something that I should be doing, getting my art in front of other people. And there's a lot of things, especially when you're getting started, it's awkward and it's mm -hmm. uncomfortable, but totally. you push through the awkwardness oh, yeah. and the weirdness of it. And then that's how you're able to be successful. Mm -hmm. And so one of the reasons that I know, especially even early on that you were going to be so successful, even just hearing your own story, obviously we know now, but it's just that you would hustle and put yourself in uncomfortable situations even early on, even before, because this was, uh, how old were you when you were putting stuff in coffee shops? I was um, that probably like 19 or 20. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, you. this was before you were super confident in yourself and doing what you were doing. Yeah. Which mm -hmm. is, it speaks a lot. It really does. And what were your parents thinking? Because you said that they thought of it more as a hobby. And yet you were making these sales, just like you were getting the gigs with modeling, pulling in some dollars. I mean, like I what mean, were your parents were still just like, meh. Most parents will be thing. like 200 bucks. That won't pay the electricity bill. <laughs> Is that how it was? <laughs> well, it's funny. You, that's, that's a good question. That's pay your funny. phone bill with that. <laughs> the funny part is that his mom yeah. was the one who would like open up his modeling checks every week and be like, oh, wow. Yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So at at one point i've been she getting like oh she would open up his mail that came to their house <laughs> you that? you're like this I, is I fraud so you can't <laughs> open up my mail they're like it's mine. <laughs> That's what he said. so like i like i always tell mom mom please like i like you know that's specifically for my me you know the mail was sent let me you know open it. i'll tell you you can ask me but mom's like ah oh, you're my son it's you know you're my son i birthed you yeah, I can open yeah exactly your mail. exactly <laughs> but um she started doing that because the first check she opened, you know, and she saw, she was surprised. And then after that, like, um, at one point it was just coming in like twice a week well, okay. because, because like every job you do, like it's, there's like a 30 day or three, 30, a month to like couple months before you get the check from the job. Jeez. That's how it worked. And so like eventually it started piling up and, 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 uh, and my mom was just like, I, I, I would come home after like, um, I actually worked at the wastewater treatment plant too. Um, <laughs> That's another 
<laughs> at the I poop plant. Like, tally all these up. <laughs> no, but that was the that was the time when I did firefighting. So I I would I would do that on the side part time. But um, the wastewater on the on yeah. The side. So I would come home from and work. You were modeling though. Yeah, and I was doing that. Yeah, so I worked at this poop plant and then yeah, modeled. damn. Anyway. Why okay, Frank. You squeeze all this into <laughs> a day. Like <laughs> you did a lot. I know, that's a lot. That's pretty cool. Um, just for anyone who's listening, I mean, what were these checks like on average, like per job? Can you? Is there an average? Well, this or? is a little more off topic, though. This is for modeling. It's not. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm curious. I'm sure there's a listener out there that's interested in modeling. <laughs> like, let's give them a little piece of cake for it. Sure, the sure. Piece so, of cake. <laughs> so for ecom, like that's what I would do a lot. That's actually very stable jobs for models. E-commerce you, for anyone e-commerce, who yes, know. Yeah. it's very good because that's like a really good stable job. Um, campaigns, they get, they pay you really good between you know it depends but between five to like fifty thousand five to fifty thousand depending five on to fifty thousand five thousand to fifty depending on how many days you're working you know but the the average clients like that i would work for like um it would pay like five to ten thousand you know for a campaign one day to um but good god but it was <laughs> we're in the wrong business kim no <laughs> just kidding um <laughs> no she's actually in the right business currently <laughs> I'm sure you are too. I'm in the wrong business. Get me out of here. (laughs) Anyways, keep going. Bye, guys. He just puts down the mic. But e commerce, like, they would pay normally, like, a lot of them, the average, you know, I work for Saks and other kind of e commerce, they would pay like 1,500 a day. And um, you just, that's not, it's not as, you're not like out like shooting outside it's just in the studio you just put the clothes on it's for their online stuff mm-hmm. so you do that and um and lo- girls make four times as much girls make four Are times you serious? Yeah, okay so tyra About. banks you know who tyra banks is mm-hmm. she's a goddess i love her um but she had a whole thing about that where she was like uh men are being undersold in the modeling industry oh, yeah. and she always speaks for the underdog too and she was like they're not just accessories like you guys are not just accessories so that's when the america's next top model they started bringing dudes on mm-hmm. too and that was really fun mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> a lot nice. of nice. really fun <laughs> yeah. well i mean thanks for a little bit of uh more detail on that i appreciate sure. it that's amazing <laughs> though i mean yeah. so you were making decent money that checks rolling in consistently it was, mom was probably like yeah she wow was like, <laughs> probably really happy so she's like okay go back to new york you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> no but no she, to, she, oh sorry continue <laughs> no no go ahead i, I think I, the I, reason why his parents like it wasn't about the money it was more like just what they're familiar with like yeah. since they're from russia and like they could they only know construction it was so different you know well, oh, i'm yeah. sure they're worried about they were worried about like longevity too yeah. you know they're exactly. like okay maybe this is a spike now but oh, what's yeah. going on in the future you know exactly. which is like what every parent would think I yeah know, that's right? actually what my dad would say hey you know you're not gonna look that young for a long time <laughs> you're like i will do my best <laughs> yeah. you're like, let me get my Sunscreen, savings up for screen. now come on yeah, yeah. I was like, okay okay let's close this modeling chapter because i mean there's a whole world of art that we barely even scratched <laughs> on well what i wanted to say is so obviously you had that that was going on but throughout all this still in the back of your mind you were still thinking about art yeah all the time yeah even and- even in the shoot sometimes i'm like yeah it's always been there like i because it's where i felt the most most like at ease, comfortable, mm-hmm. relaxed. And that's where, like, I love the, the, the creativity of modeling, you know, and kind of that experience is fun. Um, but I definitely, my heart is more in the art. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's cool that you found that too, because I think a, a, a common question that I get and a lot of people struggle with is like, how do I find my passion? And I think you did something really, really right. And one of the reasons that I think we highlighted all the different jobs you did is you don't know what you like until you've tried it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. A lot of people yeah. are like, how do I find my passion? You try things mm-hmm. and you see what you like. And I think same thing for me, literally when I was at the internship <laughs> at the media marketing company, I was thinking about like, my art and oh maybe i could do this Ooh, that would inspire that pretty piece i love that blue and you're just thinking about something constantly so i think if you're thinking about Mm -hmm. it constantly like pursue it as best as you can be it art be it whatever it is that sparks that energy inside you yeah amen to that yeah were the sales picking up once you going back to the art in the coffee shops i mean something happened right because i mean you went from that to now you have like almost a million followers it seems like you have consistent work you're doing it full time so kind of give us the details in between so you start mm-hmm. off with the coffee shops like you were talking about mm-hmm. and what happened afterwards 
And so from there, um, that's when we, you know, met and then we, she was helping me actually act, from there, when we first started da dating, like there was a moment where there was a couple of clients that called me and said, Hey, I, I saw your art at this coffee shop. Um, I, I want to buy it. How much is it? And I would, uh, I'm just about to tell my price, but my wife, she would be like, no, 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 no. We're adding this much more on You're undervaluing your, yourself. And, and, you know, and then that, and then she started like a little bit helping me out because I was like kind of selling it short, you know, giving it very, you know, undervaluing myself. And, um, but it, it was for like, I was already doing it for a while, but I was just so happy that somebody wanted my art. I didn't, I almost didn't care, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Which I, 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 I was I like, like, I would like draw this too. design for free, yeah. but after a certain point you have to be like, well, if I really yeah. want to be able to do yeah, this. to do this for a living. Well, you know? and then yeah. like, I'm sure you've gotten caught up too where you agreed on a price and you're like, man, I'm really doing a lot of work, yeah. right? I mean, mm -hmm. I yeah. think that's like kind of, you dance that balance, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. So it's interesting. Yeah. And then so um, from there, like to answer your question real quick, so then we moved to you know new york and then i kept doing art and then that's when my wife got accepted to go to um school for her bachelor's and um and then i was still in new york and she came here um i was in new york for a couple more months working there and um she just called me one time and said hey look you just come here and uh i recommend focusing on like instagram and posting your art there because I think this could be really big, you know, and um, I'm gonna pause you for just one second. What made you think that? So this was like two years ago, about um, maybe two and a half. And he was like stressing out. I could tell because he in New York, like he wanted to be there to make money so that he could come back and then have time to like, look, like have savings, you know, and look for a job and stuff. But he had no idea what he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, so for the Instagram, I was just thinking, okay, that could be a way for him to share his art with people. Because like at that time, I had started following um, like all these people on Instagram. Instagram was like really picking up at that time. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, it'd be so cool to be like a travel couple, you know? Oh and God, everyone falls into that, that blue travel, ass water. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 And I was like, that was actually your first idea. Yeah, that was my know? first I'm idea. Dead. Yeah. And so Just, I think everyone's gone through that. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone has that yeah. travel phase. And so then I was like, okay, but we're not going to do that. Like, I'm going to be in school, you know? And so I was like telling him about it. And um, then I was like, okay, well, if we're not going to be doing it just start posting your art and see what happens yeah. and i think honestly he didn't have anything else at, yeah. at home yeah, waiting yeah, yeah. for him yeah. so 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 uh, the place that she was going to school they didn't have a lot of opportunity for work mm -hmm. and i was a little bit nervous you know but um I trusted God that he's going to, you know, protect us and just whatever happens, I know that everything's going to be good because um, he has it under control. And so I, we just prayed about it. And then I came back and um, and went full doing art. And then obviously there was moments where I still worked on a side, like with my dad or my brothers and doing modeling too with like Nordstrom mm -hmm. and I would still do those, but they're not like everyday jobs, you know? So it's like seasonal. It, it's seasonal. So and it my for school food. was two hours from uh, Seattle uh, North. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of far. Yeah. So the university where you're doing your bachelor's. Yeah. Yes. It was like a very small town with like barely any work there. So that's why he was worried about coming back there. Mm -hmm. So I worked just enough to pay for bills, you know, and food to survive but then the rest of the time when i could i painted a lot and did I like to. you know put it put try to stay consistent with the the instagram and um we met with um one of the artists that was in seattle and uh, her name is sarah andrea um knows she knows her through their family you know and and so she's like hey felix we should meet with this artist she's really good and you know she's got over a hundred thousand followers she can give you some uh, us some insights mm -hmm. um and um look at andrea making the power play <laughs> yeah. yeah wow <laughs> pops to you <laughs> she's like what can i say <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you keep rolling though Anyway, so you met up with the artist. Yeah, and she, she, um, her name is on Instagram, the Mint Gardener. The Mint and Gardener. The Mint Gardener. The Mint Gardener. 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 <laughs> How many 
times she does can we really get it wrong? cool watercolor <laughs> like watercolor like um like drawings really cool like her stuff is amazing um and she met with us like she was excited she has this awesome energy you know we met at a coffee shop in seattle and she kind of gave us like a little bit of a encouragement and um some ideas like well you got to experiment with instagram you know see what what people will enjoy you have to kind of put out what you think will work she gave us like the basics the basics yeah. and um after that meeting i remember like we came home and because i had to drag him to this meeting i'm like trust me it's gonna be so good for you like let's just go please mm -hmm. and he's like ah okay whatever you know yeah. and, and <laughs> not, be not because uh, i didn't want to meet her because but because like I, that's just I'm how, kinda, he, that's how i am like i'm out. kind of like uh, hard to get out you know and meet people i need to force myself but i know when i do i always have a good time yeah. so mm -hmm. anyway yeah so um after and then after the meeting like he was actually like very excited about it and um like I would give him ideas and stuff, but it, he was the one executing everything. He was like very disciplined about mm -hmm. posting and everything like that. What were these ideas back then? Um, she, so she was basically like telling us about how it's so important to be consistent with your posting and like that your page is kind of like a TV channel and people are tuning in. So like, what can you offer to people that's different and how can you stand out with your art? And I think honestly that what made Felix stand out is like, and um, she kind of was saying this was before time-lapse videos, people weren't doing them. Mm -hmm. And so um, she's like, people like to see the process. And then we came home and Felix is like, yeah, you know, people do like to see the process. So why don't I start recording myself when I paint? And like, if you go back and scroll down to the very bottom of his page, like his videos are terrible. Like it's like half <laughs> cut off and like no music, you mm, know? Yeah. <laughs> There's like static in the back. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. But he just started posting these videos. And then um, I remember like two summers ago, we were at my grandparents and one of them like really like got like some traction and we were like, oh my gosh, we're getting like 50,000 views on this video. This is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we had like at that time, we were <laughs> slowly starting to grow with, you know, um, because of the art featuring pages. So once in a while they would feature your work, but, um, and, and we were at like five to 6,000 followers we gained. We started at 2000 mm -hmm. and, and, and what was the timeline again? This is about a year and a half ago, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And so like, um, in the beginning also we, uh, to experiment, we started posting pictures, the paintings that I did from the past and I just collected I had you know um, some pictures saved on my phone and so I, I started posting it like almost every day or, and I saw that man like and then it came to the point where I ran out and you know how art takes it you can't paint a painting a day yeah. I mean you can it depends on the style <laughs> yeah. yeah and I don't want it to be just because I have to post I need to do this you know because yeah. if you're not fully confident with it then yeah I wouldn't so it was yeah, a very yeah. so you're coming up with the process of like how to stretch out your art mm -hmm. recordings yes. to make consistent content right mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. and what did what kind of formula did you come up with at the end of the day and are you still using it today um, a li similar, yeah. But but the I assume you really had to you really had to start documenting versus only posting when you're done, right? That's kind of what you work towards, or yeah. So we yeah right. We we started posting to see what um, brought more engagement, I guess, and what people enjoyed more. And after we started posting the videos, um, they were just getting about like two to three thousand views, and we were like, wow, that's pretty good, you know. Um, that's well, wow, that's exciting. You know, it's doing really good for first couple videos. And we just, you know, thought about finding it's like a like what Andrea said, TV show. Mm -hmm. So we're like, all right, if it's like a TV show, let's let's find a day, best day and time mm -hmm. that we can find where we can just um, stay consistent with it and, um, you know, post on that day. And so we found a day that works best for us. And which, you know, for every artist or creator, it could be different. For us, it was it's Saturday evenings. Mm -hmm. And so that's what stood out the best day. We, we tested it throughout the days, other days. And go ahead. So basically, um, like we sat down and kind of like planned out, um, okay, because he was like, 
I'm exhausted, you know, like he was painting all the time. I love you guys' dynamic. <laughs> yeah, he's like so tired. And so so I'm like, okay, well, let's figure out a schedule where like something you could do, you know. And so we decided, all right, one video a week. So he's going to do one painting a week. And because before it was like three, he was trying to do three paintings a week, which is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And so he's like, I'll do one video a week. And then the other one will be like, um, my work in process picture and then like a picture of me painting or something. Yeah, but, something to stretch it out to show yeah. the process. So it's like me putting a few colors and it's just like a picture of that. And then um, the next is um, uh, maybe halfway done and then like a time lapse yeah. video or like, a, you know, and then the finished painting that that gives like a week mm -hmm. um, of, you know, you, you're done. So um, that saved a lot. It gave me a lot of less, you know, pressure on trying to get three paintings done a week and I would actually go into detail so I like the details part and um but yeah so through experimenting I think we saw what people liked mm -hmm. what worked best for us and then from there um so you're posting like around three times a week? Three times a week. Yeah. And consistency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Consistency and, is and very it's important. It's that cliche that you always hear about like documenting over creating, you know? Mm -hmm. You are creating but you're like really stretching it out, which is so mm -hmm. smart. Yeah. yeah. It's, I think it's important because they he, people like it's like a story. You know, people when they watch a show, there's episodes. Yeah. Imagine if there was one episode released. Uh, you know, usually the first ones like or first couple, they're like the big ones mm -hmm. and you're like, "Wow." And then that's it. Is yeah. The show is done? What? No, yeah. I want more. Yeah. yeah, it gives them more investment into yeah. the whole process, yeah. right? That's mm -hmm. true. That's true. So what I want to know is because I think I experimented a lot too with the whole Instagram growth, things like that. It was cool. Feature pages, I think, were one thing that was really interesting and helpful. So I think feature pages and what you're doing. So if you're doing art, feature pages for art. I remember one of the things that got us started before I was even posting art was we would like have couples photo shoots. You get on like couples photo shoots feature pages. There's feature pages for pretty much any category mm -hmm. that you're doing. If you're doing yoga, if you're doing food, mm -hmm. things like that, that really, really help. And I feel like it's easier to get onto those than you would think because they're looking for content to post just like we are, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's like you're almost helping them by being like, hey, look at this, right? Yeah. 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 To yep. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And to, to not give false uh, expectations because I remember when I was starting to grow and being like I want people to post my art a lot of times we would message them and they would message us back be like two posts two hundred dollars and they'd be like what mm -hmm. yeah. like mm -hmm. but it's <laughs> but it's nice I'm assuming you DM'd a few then <laughs> oh yeah no I definitely DM'd a few and no, no I'm I mean not Felix sure. too oh yeah we, we we reached out as well so what we yeah. would do in the beginning is okay so for people who say like <laughs> oh you guys bought your followers or whatever yeah. um so we will admit we bought one post in the very beginning just to try it and see what would happen. It was like $20, $20 and it did nothing. What does that mean to buy a post? <laughs> like what you were saying, a feature, feature. you know, on like a page. A feature oh, page. Pay for a page. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. there's like a feature page that just shares art, art at work and mm -hmm. we message them. They're like, oh, well, it costs $25 if you want to be featured. And so we tried that. That was in, in the beginning stages um, to see how it would work and there was it was like it was pointless. nothing it was, <laughs> more was often nothing. than not sometimes those pages are fake too but also to combat that that's not bad a lot of companies they will pay for influencer marketing i've done it once as well and it worked out pretty well for me i think it just depends on the page yeah. it's too. Just marketing in general it's yeah. marketing think about it more like you're a paying billboard, for you know impressions I mean? you're paying yeah. for impressions yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly and they're legit impressions on like like getting bots as followers or blah 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 you know mm -hmm. so. Definitely, definitely so like in the beginning we didn't really have money to do that and mm -hmm. um also, we didn't really even know like what were the good pages and what were not, you know, like we didn't know the whole thing about like, oh, you should see like check out their likes and make sure that it's proportional it's to, legit, their, yeah. to their followers and everything, you know, mm -hmm. and um, and so then uh Oh gosh. So we're figuring out the good pages, which ones are right, which ones are not working. Oh yeah. So we didn't have money in the beginning to like pay for any of these features or anything. So um we were like, okay, well, how can we benefit them and they benefit us? You know? Mm -hmm. So we're like, how about we offer um a shout out on our story and they'll shout out us on their story. That's have what a shout out. I've yeah. been doing as cliche yeah. as it sounds. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so like we wouldn't go for like the big pages, but even Oh my god, that's how we met. I just remembered. 
I th- sorry, I'm so sorry. I just <laughs> before the whole Mission Marisol thing, I think I probably DM'd you saying, "Do you want to do shout out for shout out?" I feel like oh. we would have done that, and then we oh, did yeah. that. I think, and I then think we followed right. each other. Oh yeah, he got that totally something. About that. No, that's it, it. Just like reminded me. That's a huge one as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely, I rem- definitely. I think I remember that. Yeah, because yeah. I was yeah. like, his art's so cool. I was like searching for cool artists to mm-hmm. feature. Mm-hmm. And what's interesting oh, thank you, thank you. is uh, he's like, your stop, art was please, cool stop. too. You thank know? you. See, it works out. <laughs> yeah, that's but why it, I was like, oh, if sweet. you think about it, because some people will be like, oh, poo, shout out for shout out. And like, honestly, I haven't had a single person DM me saying, don't do it. If anything, I have people DMing me, as long as you're not spamming, because mm-hmm. that can be bad too. If you're doing like maybe one a day, every other day at most, people have DM me being like, I love this page. Thank you so much for sharing. I love this. Thank you so much for sharing. Mm -hmm. And it's especially if you watch the numbers closely, it is a good consistent form of growth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. So you guys were doing that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, In the beginning. And then like once pages started featuring his stuff, like other pages would pick it up and like Mm -hmm. it kind of like there was this one point where it just started like rolling really fast and um we would another thing we would do is like whenever a page features him we like acknowledge it like we would share it on our story so Mm -hmm. they get traffic you know so they appreciate that you know um because it's also benefiting them yeah Yeah. so then then, that's some art because to be honest like even i'm not so in the whole you know feature pages thing but we still get tagged and stuff here and there and i don't even really acknowledge it so it's kind of a good thing to say first to start encouraging it i would always share on my story like when a page featured us and we were still growing and be like thank you so much for the share now Mm -hmm. i think it happens so often especially like my line drawings poets posted all the time Mm -hmm. i used to share every single one now it just wouldn't be it's it's hard it's not it is it is but but that's a good spot to get to to where you almost can't do every mm-hmm. single one but i think it's it's a really good way and also to encourage people to do it i mean i just like holding that value like what you guys are doing you know like yeah. acknowledging who you can about the people that are you know they're checking out your stuff and they love it i love that yeah yeah were there any other i don't want to use like growth hacks because i'm trying to remember so mine, it's mostly so, just cross collaboration. So co- collabs as well, like yeah. other colla- like artists mm-hmm. that you that have like either similar following or even if it's a little less, like but some some artists that you're interested in collaborating with. Yeah. Um, I think that helps as well. Um, collaboration, it, what kind? Like I've collaborated with artists where I painted half a piece and ah, then I sent yeah. it over and they did half and that we is each so sick. You should shared do something. That. Maybe we could do something. How cool yeah, would a resin could. piece be like that? Like you hand it to them and you just need to put a layer over it or something? Mm-hmm. That looked yeah. dope. Yeah, we do like a you little You know, so you never know. Maybe that's exactly a too. collab. Hey, yo, <laughs> that could be a good <laughs> That'd one. Be cool. That would be awesome. I, that I'm actually totally would make down. a cool like ocean piece. Mm-hmm. I like that. You ever done resin over acrylic? Yeah. Yeah? Most of my pieces have like everything in them. Over acrylic? Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought it was alcohol I, ink every or it's watercolor. primarily ink and that that one's primarily watercolor but most of my pieces I don't want to go too much into detail but I'll throw a lot of stuff in there interesting mm, yeah okay so collaborations with other artists did you have a disciplined schedule where you were like once a week because I remember me and my interns to even when we were getting started we were like okay once a month we want to see if we can have like a giveaway or something like that mm. did you mm. do something mm-hmm. like okay once a month we want to collaborate with an artist or how was that for you um so for me like when i i actually like i wanted to collaborate with artists i was excited about like yeah. just because i want to make sure we we both are putting our hearts into this not just using the audience just for the followers or whatever because yeah. i think that could get kind of like sketchy you and know you can tell too get I to think, the brain I, so yeah. like i chose like artists that i and it came it wasn't planned out like it wasn't like once a month it was whenever it came it happened you know mm-hmm. but um but the, you mentioned about the giveaways mm-hmm. um we we definitely did that too mm-hmm. um we tried to be consistent so it was like once a month or once every two months yeah. we'd try to do a giveaway yeah um in the beginning we we were doing giveaways like hey here's a blank canvas uh tag three friends you know who wants an original painting and they can tell me what they want on this piece oh, and i'll paint beautiful. it for them i did that before too i did whoever three winners i'll do a line drawing of whatever picture you want yeah you know yeah, yeah. and yeah. i think the people get excited they're like oh yeah. free painting awesome yeah let's let's Appreciate do it, it. I think something else for the Instagram growth um, is 
keeping an eye on new releases on Instagram, like new features. Yeah. Um, and because they always will reward you if you use their new features. Mm-hmm. But I saw you guys using IGTV. Yeah, and yeah. I heard about that. When hack. it first came out, people were like, "What is this?" It's a, they're really pushing it right now. Like yeah. it gets like double the views. Than yeah. That normal video. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Dang, yeah. what am I doing? I haven't been posting. I've been telling you about this. We, <laughs> yeah. We be watching this in my work. I'm just <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But he now, gets to see large scale at work. Now, it's really cool. honestly, it's like. Um, they I think they realized that everyone like figured that out you know so they yeah. kind of like switched it up but it still gets better than regular videos yeah. yeah so I actually like the IGTV videos because like I would have to like edit the videos and make it to one minute and sometimes it takes me all day to paint a piece and um, and then the next day you know and then I have to put it all under a minute yeah. so fast you can't see what I'm doing almost yeah. so even, IGTV you could you know make it longer even with yeah. uh, the content of my work with the internet interviews and everything it's sometimes it's hard to compress a message into one minute so it's cool to have that freedom yeah totally yeah yeah, yeah that's so cool. that's why i liked using the ig2 i'm glad that they had that feature yeah um, that's super cool that's I, I, i'd like to share something that i think is important mm-hmm. for any creator if mm-hmm. it's art or anything i think first when you're obviously starting out you're experimenting to see what people will enjoy most Mm -hmm. and the reason why you're doing that because you're you're trying to find uh that like something that you people will enjoy what you're creating in your unique style and when you when you find that when people you that you're showing that you're working with people like that you know because you're trying to see figure that out and once you figure that out i think listening to your audience is very important because like uh, there was comments and, and messages that we would get and um asking hey can you you know like please i i really like this can you show us how you blend or what materials you used mm-hmm. or how you do this and because we We've been getting so many messages like that. We started working on opening a YouTube where we can give lessons mm-hmm. step by step, you mm-hmm. know, and that shows that you you care about your people, your audience, and and um, you're bringing value to people. So I think that is a big one: is to bring value, mm-hmm. not just yes. like post yourself and show your what you're doing, but you're yeah. bringing value to the yeah. people that are um, following you, and they're getting something in return. So it's a win-win. Um, but is there anything else? I'd encourage you guys to bring value you so i think that regarding like the instagram growth and stuff like of course it's important but also to not get too caught up in it i think what felix said going off of that is like if you bring value people will follow and you don't need to worry so much about the followers and the numbers or the likes and if you're too worried about that you can't focus on your art so it's like just keep what's important important Mm -hmm. i find really quality content yes yeah Yeah. i find it really interesting though because you're talking about like you know taking note at what your uh, audience likes of what you do but do you ever get so caught up in that that maybe you get into a spot in your artistic realm where you're you feel like you're just doing this piece for someone else do you ever get caught up in that at all um you, you know like yeah i know what you mean like 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 you're not doing something for you, for, for you. like has it ever gone in there i guess um for tutorials i'll be honest i would do them every week and they're like an, uh, up to two hour long tutorials you know and i and i would edit everything i do the editing and everything and through my phone so that's a lot of work you know trying to do the tutorials edit that and then do the time lapse videos and then do the detailing and then uh, you know create all the other content um but uh so because there was a lot of work yes it could get to you because you piled it onto yourself mm-hmm. but the whole process of painting once a minute i'm enjoying it you know no yeah. matter what it love is love to hear that man so yeah. so like it's just like the thing is for me is if like if like we're getting to the point where we can we're able to hire somebody to record or like help us edit or manage something that gives me more much more time to just focus on creating and i think every artist need needs that you know yeah um where i can just focus on creating and um the reason why I don't mind because I can create it in my own style and nobody's forcing me to do it in, you know, in a specific, hey, can you copy, you know, Van Gogh's piece? Can you do this uh, tutorial or this? And I don't really do those things. I don't like to really copy unless I'm practicing for myself. But like that was when I used to do that when I first started, you know, like just kind of to train myself. Mm-hmm. But now I like to kind of uh, just paint what I feel and, um, you know, 
Yeah, yeah. That that's it? awesome. Is yeah, content is king. Do? Love what you do. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, what, what, uh, what did you want to get into before we were getting to close out too? Oh, I just wanted to wrap up, finish basically on the topic that you were talking about because I know this is going to be like what gets the most clicks um, and stuff to you guys. But so for the Instagram growth, giveaways are a good thing. Um, shout out for shout outs are a good thing quality content giving insight providing value i think that's something that's huge Mm -hmm. and that goes hand in hand with enjoying what you're doing Mm -hmm. being authentic uh social media is one of the platforms that you really can't be inauthentic you can try but it's not really gonna pan out that well i don't think i think people are really looking to see who you are and what you do and what makes you excited and things like that so content let's see what else do we go over consistency Um, consistency Mm -hmm. stretching out your content so that way you provide value giving insight and behind the scenes things like that well it's more also stretching out content so you can manage it really yeah Mm -hmm. definitely because if you're just documenting every piece you're finishing you get in an art example into the realm where you were at trying Mm -hmm. to finish three pieces a week so that's the strategy behind the whole stretching of it too yeah Mm -hmm. documenting of it yeah Yeah. and you can't possibly be creative when you're like under pressure to make three paintings a week yeah that was that that's was a lot yeah, yeah. it was yeah. insane i'm I, I was shocked that i used to do that it was crazy <laughs> you're like go me <laughs> yeah yeah Great have you guys job. heard snoop Dogg's? <laughs> i want to thank me <laughs> <laughs> that's a yeah. good one. <laughs> oh, anyway um, but I feel like I want to close the podcast on that. I want to. I want to thank me. Yeah, no, no, but <laughs> be like pan out chats with Max. Well, <laughs> um, but so yeah. So what else do you have? Any other tips, tricks, insights, things like that that you guys found really helpful? Because you guys definitely grew incredibly fast. Like there had to be some intentionality, you know? Yeah, I think that um, as I said before, like one of the main things was doing something at the time was innovative for Instagram. A lot of people were not doing that. So I think that when you're coming, like it also goes in hand with the value. Like what can you do that's different and make you stand out from what other people are already doing? And additionally, I think another big thing is that um, his community, like he really wanted it to be about a community of people. Mm -hmm. So it's not only about Felix. Um, He made a hashtag hashtag color by felix so that people can like share their recreations and he like likes to connect with his followers through like commenting on his rec- their recreations and all that stuff so i think that also helped so creating a community around what you do and mm-hmm. that's really cool because that way you get to like obviously you're inspiring people to paint and then you're allowing them to kind of be brave and then post what they painted Mm -hmm. even though most people like for some people that's kind of a hard deal Mm -hmm. you know to be like well i made this Mm -hmm. i like it and then just share it that's awesome so inspiring to me i think that's why it keeps me going to you know doing these tutorials because it's um i see all these testimonies or hear these messages and um and see these recreations and that's they took the time to 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 create this piece and enjoy the piece the it's just amazing feeling it's like like it's always better to give than to receive Mm -hmm. Uh, and you know and 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 you get something a lot more from giving but you you actually get a lot more from that it's it's more than you know money can buy or anything Mm -hmm. but anyway um anything else you wanted to add to i want to ask though i mean for any artist there's so many artists that want to make that bridge from taking it from a hobby to maybe like a side business or side business or even their main business Mm -hmm. she just did a workshop with a bunch of moms and people aspiring to be in that kind of position. I mean, what are a couple pieces of advice you'd have to anyone that, you know, they've been practicing their craft, but they just need a little kickstart? Yeah. Um, you want to start or should? <laughs> Where to start? Um, okay. She's like, don't They're do it. Cut it too, so, they won't <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah. so don't feel the pressure okay. there. Okay, okay, so you can start. Oh. So, um... Honestly, I think with you and with Felix, you both started posting your stuff on Etsy before you had your own website. And I think that that's like a good kind of like kickstart, I guess, just um, for selling your artwork, if that's... So you're saying like if they want to do their craft full time? Yeah, I mean, mean, like what are just a couple pieces of advice you'd offer to someone who's, you know 
they've been practicing, they've been doing art for a while, mm-hmm. and they want to take that step to maybe make the first sale, like that kind of like the beginning yeah, of I, it all. You honestly, know? like for me, like and like how they should think about everything, like just a couple pieces of advice there. I'll, I'll say like I know it might sound you know. But I think like if you have a lot of pieces and you didn't show, like then you're not gonna get anywhere if you don't yeah. get out and put it out there. And so whether putting it on online and making it available for people or going into like like what I did, going into coffee shops because a lot of people love coffee, especially in Seattle area. So a ton <laughs> of people, it's always packed. And so when they see art, you know, heading there, it's like they get coffee and it's like a little gallery. So mm-hmm um or like or restaurants or places like that to start showing your art you know get your your art out there show your art in any places i've shown it at hospitals too Mm -hmm. and uh, places like that and so that's i love that and and so anywhere you can anywhere you can you know just start getting it out there and (laughs) i think i think it's just people will start reaching out they'll they'll start reaching out and then from there they'll have connections and then you're gonna connect with somebody else and it's just gonna come to you in such a unique way way um something i want to add on is you have to get yourself out there um but also you need to be very honest and like kind of decide like is this like what you can't imagine your life without because as we were speaking about earlier if if it's something that you're like oh i kind of like art you know it's something that i like to do but it's not something that i need to do you know like both of you said it's like something that you can't imagine living without Mm -hmm. and when you have that you have so much determination to make it happen and like Cause it's not easy. Like both of you know, it's so hard and you're going to come up against difficulties and, um, financially and just like figuring out the whole business side and everything. But if you keep going, if it's what you're actually passionate about, it'll, you know, like you'll stick with it. You have to Mm -hmm. stick with it and yeah and then one more thing is like for example for uh, if you're sharing it on social media uh, we've done this where we have reached out to um, a person where we thought wow would be cool if they wore one of the painted jean jackets or had a painting you know and so we would message say hey um you know i'm an artist and i love what you're doing um i would be honored if you had one of my jackets or, or 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 painted you know like you know, p- painting, um, I'd like to gift it to you. Uh, are you in need do you, you know, where can I give it to you? You know, and you yeah. give them something because a lot of people would ask like, Hey, can you feature, can you put my name out there too? I'm an artist. I'm starting. And people are not really giving the reason, like they just kind of want like, like they're focused on like again the numbers you know mm-hmm. but like your your what can you give to them i think is important mm-hmm. so um uh, yeah adding value, adding value again mm-hmm. is very important yeah so uh, kim and i have talked about this a lot the whole like new age art thinking versus old age you know we talked about direct to consumer we briefly touched on galleries she's looking at get, getting into galleries in new york she's in one in london she's doing a show in vegas um i kind of look at it more as just another marketing channel at this point Mm -hmm. kind of similar to a brick and mortar shop in like retail Mm -hmm. versus online e-commerce that's however what what is your guys thinking of it do you hold the value over galleries like it's like the pinnacle like you have to be there or do you think that you know art businesses in art and artists can function without having the gallery as an option to have their work be shown in Mm mm-hmm What's your opinion on all that? Um, So I think that now it's like you don't necessarily need a gallery as you did before. Um, I think we were kind of talking earlier about how right now it's almost the equivalent of like an Instagram model versus a model that has an agency. It's Mm -hmm. like, um, yeah, because the like agencies, yeah, maybe you could get... um, a few more like high profile jobs like for example it's I mean there are campaigns like Gucci or whatever that might work with an influencer but it's more likely that they're gonna go for an agency but Mm -hmm. um 
there's still tons of influencer models that you can get like direct yeah jobs. like for example when i went to castings in new york um it, there, most of the castings when instagram was picking up the first couple questions were well the first question was what's your instagram holder name oh yeah. wow. how many followers how, do you have because they how many followers you got yeah. you know and it's like <laughs> it's like a very different it's, we're it's like, so the different followers don't matter and they're like exactly how many do you have <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was like very strange you're like you, you go to these and and so you could tell you could see like um a lot of it um like they would hire us based on like sometimes the the following that you got because it's more exposure for their brand or something you know bang for their buck Mm -hmm. yeah i mean i would do that too as a company so Mm -hmm. you can't hate yeah totally so yeah i don't think it's something that's necessary anymore it's kind of like taking out and it's kind of actually nice to take out the middle person and be able to deal directly with your own clients you know Mm um i mean if you're at the point where you can get a gallery, I mean, and why not? The more the merrier, Yeah, right? so... But I just find it so interesting because we were in a gallery in New York la- uh, last week and the prices that they were selling this one artist's work for were very close to what she's been selling directly for and there's no really gallery cute. cut there. He was you like, know? I'm proud of you, baby. Yeah, I was <laughs> like, wow. Thank you. I was looking at the numbers, I'm like... <laughs> my look i don't know if we need to be in here i'm just yeah. saying yeah yeah i'm sure you're in a few galleries too i mean it helps right i mean it, um, it's kind of like you know giving a commission for sales of course you know it's another channel but that's kind of more how i'm looking at it versus like you have to do this this is like the structure you need to follow this path yeah it's different you we'll know? take it mm-hmm. back because are you in galleries i know you said you were approached but how did that um, go so yeah we were approached through there's a gallery from new york we were approached um through online so we have submitted um you know some pieces through there so we have a we have a gallery there but um we haven't been physically in there Mm -hmm. so it was like uh they really loved my work and they really wanted to work and that was one of the galleries we're like well new york is kind of cool let's try it out you know let's it's big let's see what happens but i never really I, I, I thought to myself, like, like I want to get to the level where I know that, like, galleries can be very fine, you know, artists, where it's more elegant and, you know. And I, I just thought, like, well, if I'm showing at coffee shops, am I worth going there? But it's, like, me undervaluing myself, you know. So I never approached yeah. any galleries, actually. I just um, sell, sold art directly, and I met, like... Through actually through coffee shops, um, we sold like eleven paintings to a collector, and nice. and, and and that was like a, a, a cool coffee story. shop, yeah. and a coffee shop could be a gallery. I'm telling you, it's crazy. And so like that happened to us, and so for us, it's been like we didn't really need a gallery, and mm-hmm. we never. That's why we never considered one, mm-hmm. but um, really considered one, like going in and really looking for one. Mm-hmm. But um, maybe we will one day. Like you guys are opening one uh, or getting one soon, and um, and it worked out like what you said. The relationship is so important. If so you important. if they can take care of you, the artist, I think that's very important because if it's just about like making the money, because I heard stories where galleries um, where they would sell the artwork and um, the the you know they would sell it, but then the other people would auction it off for a lot more behind their backs you know and it's like this like There's secret thing it's just, thing. it could be a sketchy thing there, you know yeah and interesting and uh, yeah it could be like i've heard heard stories from some yeah. of the artists that were screwed like that so you you never know you have to be very careful you have to mm-hmm. know who you're working with and have a good relationship with them and that's what it came down to like with the gallery thing is kind of like for us right now we're selling to clients directly and it's honestly just we prefer it that way because we trust ourselves and we know how we can price everything so um but maybe eventually we'll do a gallery but yeah but it's cool to especially young emerging artists that are like god i don't think i could ever be in a gallery it's like you don't need to yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you for can us, do your own thing to. yeah yeah which is so cool i like the whole coffee shop collector thing mm-hmm. that's a cool story mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's amazing well i think we should close out on that note Felix, Andrea, it was a pleasure. Kim, thanks yes. for co-hosting yes. for the Thank first you. time. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> Thank you.
thank you guys for having us. Of course, yeah. man. I'm excited. We're going out. Shout out to Breaker 86. We're going to go out there right now. It's an 80s bar in LA. If you ever come out here, let us know. Maybe we'll oh meet you God. out there. We might Maybe. already be there. You never know. Anyways, uh, it was a blast, guys. Uh, this was another episode of a podcast. We're Maybe in the process of renaming it. It was Chats with Max, but we shall see. Uh, And we'll see you guys next time, all right? Catch you later. Bye. Take care, guys.